What's going on everybody, it's Joel here and today we're doing the review of the Reebok Nano 14s. All right, so it's been about two months since the Nano 14s came out and since I did my initial impressions video on this shoe. If you haven't already seen that, I highly recommend that you check that out before you start today's video. Today, we're mainly gonna be focused on the performance aspects of the Nano 14, what it's been like to work out in these shoes over the last two months and how they've held up during the duration of my testing. So the Nano 14 is basically an evolution of the Nano 13. So they take the same tooling and then they update it and we have the Nano 14. So that's why there's a lot of similarities in the way that the shoes look. And I mean, realistically, in the way that the shoes feel as well. If you watch my videos, then you'd know that I really like the Nano 13s. I think they are a great training shoe, great CrossFit shoe. And I actually picked them as my best training shoe of 2023. So it was pretty much already a given that I was gonna like the Nano 14, considering that they would be just an evolution of the 13. And they really just improved the 13 in pretty much all the areas that I had issues with. And there weren't a whole lot of them, but let's get to talking about the Nano 14. So we have a improved version of Flex Weave Knit. Honestly, it's not all that much different. It's flexible where you need it to be, which is right around the top of the toe box. And then it's structured where you need it to be around the lateral and medial sides of the toe box. It gives you a little bit more foot containment when you are doing your lifts. And I never had any issues with like my foot spilling over these shoes, nor did I have any issues with flexibility when I needed the shoes to be flexible. Around the middle part of the shoe, we have kind of like the older gen flex weave and these are the breathable mesh panels or flex weave panels uh, to increase the airflow in the shoe. I didn't honestly notice a huge difference from the Nano 13s to the Nano 14s in terms of breathability, but that's also a good thing because I also didn't notice my feet getting hot in either of the shoes too. So coming around to the back part of the shoe, we have a more streamlined version of the lift and run chassis that debuted on last year's Nano 13. It's basically a TPU piece that contains the heel and extends all the way out to the metatarsals and actually has a dome in the heel part of the shoe. This is last year's lift and run chassis, but it's basically the same idea. So that dome is filled with the midsole foam uh, which is float right energy and is supposed to flatten out and stabilize the heel when you're lifting and kind of give you a little bit more pop when you're running. I didn't really notice it as much last year as I did this year. The heel now to me feels a lot more stable and I'll get back to that later. And these shoes do feel a little bit easier to run in. I think that might be uh, because the lift and run chassis is just a little bit shorter, uh, but it could just be, you know, like a placebo kind of thing, but these definitely do feel better to run in. Now coming around to the tongue of the shoe, one of the biggest issues that everyone always has, at least for the last three years with Nanos, is that the tongue slides around and it was never gusseted for like the last three years for whatever reason. Uh, that has been fixed this year. It is gusseted, so you don't have to worry about the tongue sliding around, but the material is basically the same thing as it was last year. Um, it's in between thick and thin, it, you know, it's not paper thin like some of these microfiber tongues and it's not really thick and gets in the way. I don't mind it. It kind of folds right over the front part of your ankle. Um, so not something that I've ever had an issue with. The laces on the shoe, just the standard flat lace. They stay tied, can't hate on it. Another change from the 13s to the 14s is the ankle collar. Even though it looks kind of the same, they did add more cushioning throughout and it's a more dense cushioning. They also increased the heel rake. It's a little bit more aggressive on the 14s than the 13s. And that's supposed to minimize heel slip. I still ran into a little bit, but what I found that minimizes the heel slip issue with these shoes is that if you just take the top lace and you lace it through the front part instead of inside, you can get better back pressure when you're tying your shoes. And it really does 
actually minimize the heel slip, especially compared to what it was on the 13s. Now, a few things that have not changed from the 13s to the 14s is the Float Ride Energy Foam. It's still the same Float Ride Energy Foam. The drop is still seven millimeters. It's still a more responsive feeling shoe. It's not like a mushy running shoe at all. The outsole has not changed at all. It's still a very flat contact wide outsole. And the traction pattern is the exact same. We still have the Rope Pro kind of lip that comes up on the side of the shoe. And these are still excellent rope climbing shoes because they really haven't changed too much in that area. One thing that was a little bit worrisome to me is that when you are descending down the rope, it does put quite a bit of friction on the medial part of the shoe. And I do not know how this flex weave is gonna hold up over time. I remember on the 13s, uh, I would see this part of the vector get pretty much rubbed off from the rope. And uh, now that this part is more open, I'm a little bit more concerned about it, but during the rope climbs that I've used this shoe for, it hasn't really done too much to affect the durability of that part of the shoe. Another thing that they changed that I feel is a huge improvement is the insole. And it's not because the insole is any different, it's actually the same insole, like material, thickness, everything uh, in terms of like the build besides the like way that it's lined on top. It's now a more rough material than the smooth material from last year. And that was a huge problem with the 13. So that's a huge problem that I had with the 13s was that my feet could go sliding around inside the shoe because Depending on the socks that you wear, this material won't catch your socks at all. Whereas this material I had no issues with. So doing things like, you know, burpees over bar, things where you have to have some kind of lateral stability, I felt like the Nano 14s were much better in that area. Now, since the Nano 14s are basically a streamlined version of the Nano 13s, they receive a huge decrease in weight. The Nano 13s in a size 10, I clocked in at 13.6 ounces. The Nano 14s in a size 10 and a half clocked in at 12.9 ounces. So pretty sizable change in weight. And that is even going up half a size, which now takes me to the next topic. And that's how the shoes fit. Unfortunately for people that have wide feet, the Nano 14s fit more narrow than the Nano 13s. I just kind of had a hunch and I went with a size 10 and a half compared to the size 10 that I was wearing on my Nano 13s. And I still found that the 14s were actually a little bit more on the narrow side. The Nano 13s for sure have a wider toe box. And I think that is just the way that the upper is patterned. Uh, I don't think that they changed too much in the dimensions of the shoe. I just think that the difference in materials made the shoe fit a little bit more narrow. Now the length to me feels pretty much spot on. I don't really notice a huge difference in the way that the shoes fit that way. It's mainly just in the, I guess, width department that the shoes feel different. So the way that I would size the 14s is as follows. If you typically wear your Reeboks half a size down from your Nikes, that's what I typically do, then I would recommend going up half a size to your Nano 14s. If you wear your Reeboks and your Nikes in the same size, then I would just stick with whatever that size is for the Nano 14s. These size more similar to the Nano 10, the Nano 8, the Nano 6 and the Nano 4. So they size on the smaller side for Reebok shoes. Even with that, I still feel like these are more on the narrow side than we typically find from Reebok shoes. So some people are not gonna like that about them. I don't think that they are like toe crunchingly narrow. And I still think that most people are gonna be able to wear these shoes just fine. The only people that I would say might wanna err on the side of caution 
are people that have really wide feet. They can be a little bit constricting in the middle part of the shoe. You will feel the lift and run chassis kind of push up against your arches. If you have collapsed arches, that was an issue that I found uh, I would run into on my right shoe, not so much my left shoe. It didn't really bother me all that much and it did break in a little bit, which was a pretty quick process. Other than that, these shoes, like I said, have a little bit of heel slip, not too bad. Nothing that you can't remedy by just playing around with the lacing. And overall, while they're probably like not the wide issue, I still think that they're gonna fit most people just fine. So when it came to flexibility and running, these are still not gonna be my preferred choice when it came to a, a training day that required more body weight movements, running, agility to work, plyometrics to work, but I would not shy away from these shoes either. I thought that compared to last year's Nano 13s, these were a lot better just overall in the flexibility and just like comfort and running department. They're not a ton more flexible than they were last year. They are just a little bit more flexible, but I think where they benefit the most is from the weight difference. These feel more agile on your feet than the more clunky Nano 13s. The heel construction is pretty much the same. So like if you're a heel striker, you're gonna definitely notice that when you run. But I thought that these shoes, they moved with your feet a little bit better than the Nano 13s where they were just a little bit less clunky than last year's model was. Would I go and run a couple miles in these shoes? They would not be my first choice. Uh, I probably would stick to like a mile max in these. Pretty much any of the stuff that you'll find in a CrossFit workout, uh, 400 repeats, 800 repeats would be just fine in these. I thought that they did a lot better on the Assault Runner than they did on pavement. So if you're somebody that runs on the treadmill more often, uh, then I think that these actually do a pretty good job. Uh, but yeah, you know, you kind of have to expect that they are more of a training shoe than a running shoe. And you know, that's kind of just a side thing in training. But when it came to things like burpees and double unders and box jumps, I actually really like these shoes. I wore them for 24.1, which obviously is the burpee hell workout and they held up just fine. My feet, for sure we're burning up by the end of the workout, but it wasn't bad and it wasn't any worse than it would be in any other shoe. I thought the lateral stability was good in these shoes. I could just hop to my feet, hop over the dumbbell, same with like bar facing burpees. The toe flexibility gives you this little pop to get off the ground, which I really liked with these shoes. And the grip and responsiveness for doing like box jumps was also really good in these shoes. You feel real planted when you land on top of the box and then you can easily spring back onto the box when you're doing like box jumps rebounding. And then for double unders, I never really felt like my feet got tired wearing these shoes. Tracking the rope was pretty easy to do. And just overall, I thought that for like a CrossFit workout where you'll find like a pairing of like box jumps and like a lift and then maybe some kind of gymnastics movement. I thought that these were excellent. All right, so when it came to lifting, I already really liked the Nano 13s for lifts. And for whatever reason, I think the Nano 14s are a better lifting shoe. And that mainly came in the way of responsiveness, power delivery. I thought that the Nano 14s were just more responsive overall than the 13s, which is weird because I know they have the same midsole cushioning. They have pretty much the same lift and run chassis. The differences that they made to the lift and run chassis would not influence the way that these shoes felt when it came to power delivery, but the Nano 14s felt more responsive. I noticed that mainly in squatting. And the Nano 13s I thought were pretty good. When I got to like a heavy five rep max in the Nano 13s, I didn't get as high as I thought I would, but with the Nano 14s, I was able to squat over 400 pounds without that much issue. Like they would not make me change out of these shoes into like a barefoot shoe or a lifter um, to squat that kind of weight, which with the Nano 13s, I remember feeling like I was kind of pushing in the mush when I got to the heavier percentages. The same thing went with deadlifts. Both of these shoes would not be ideal for deadlifting, obviously, because there is a seven millimeter drop. It's a pretty decent amount of midsole cushioning in both of the shoes, but 
I didn't really have any issues deadlifting up to 500 in the Nano 14s. Uh, but you do have to realize that you're gonna be pitched more forward because of that increased drop compared to like something that's just flatter overall. Now where that pitch actually helps is for your Olympic weightlifting movements, which I thought the Nano 14s were also really good. The Nano 13s to me were also really good, uh, but you do get the increased heel height for your Olympic weightlifting movements. If you're somebody that struggles with mobility, uh, then you would want something that had a slightly higher drop because it would help you out. Uh, the lateral stability and grip on the shoe is also very good. The ground contact is excellent. These shoes don't feel like they pitch you forward. Obviously because they have a seven millimeter drop and they have a little bit more flex at the toe, they can pitch you forward, but it's nothing even remotely close to how it was on the Nano 11 and 12. Uh, it's pretty easy to ground the toe in these shoes and overall the contact patch is very flat. Things like barbell cycling, these handled very well. I thought that they were extremely responsive, never really missed a beat when it came to moving the barbell for reps. And you know, when it came to just your standard Olympic weightlifting movements, I found that for a training shoe, these were probably my favorite out of a lot of the shoes that I've tested throughout the last, I don't know, five years or so. All right, so the Nano 14s retail for $140. I think that was a $5 increase over last year's model. And for that price, I would wholeheartedly recommend the Nano 14s. If you're somebody that's in between the Nano 13s at kind of a discount, like 10% off, and the Nano 14s at full price, just go for the Nano 14s. They're easily the better shoe. It's the best training shoe that Reebok has come out with since the Nano 10s. These are easily one of the best training shoes at the moment. And I actually have some difficulties when it comes to picking out a favorite between these Reds and the Strike Haze. They all have kind of their different uses, but I would throw the Nano 14s in the mix if I was somebody that was looking for more stability in my shoe, but didn't want to have a shoe that I couldn't go run in, have a shoe that I couldn't go do plyometric movements in. I think the Rads are probably the best balance out of the Nano 14s, the Strike Haze. Um, so if you're somebody that wanted the best of both worlds, something that had a little bit more stability than the Haze, but you could still run in, I think that's where the Rad would come in. And then the Haze would be something that like, if you wanted something to move around more in, something that was better for running, body weight movements, I think the Strike Haze would be that one. But you could easily throw the Nano 14s into the mix. I think that these check all the boxes. They are a improvement over the Nano 13s, which is a shoe that I had already liked. They just basically took that shoe, fixed, all the gripes that I had about it, the slippery insole, the weight. Anytime I come from the other training shoes that I've been using to the Nano 14s, I just feel the most confident in my ability to take on any workout that is being given to me. Whether it's a CrossFit workout triplet that requires me to do some kind of gymnastics, plyometric movement, agility work, and weightlifting, uh, whether it's just, just straight up lifting, squatting, or just straight up, just like Olympic weightlifting, I feel like the Nano 14s check all the boxes and I'm never at a loss for performance with the Nano 14s. These are excellent training shoes. I highly recommend them. They are, you know, one of the top three training shoes at the moment right now. So if you guys have any questions about the Nano 14s, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And as always guys, please hit that like button, subscribe, and thanks for watching.